YouTube as it going the Godows is back with a preview and things to watch players to watch for the Atlanta Falcons a team that I can get pretty pumped about for this season so I'm excited to break it down in this video we are doing this for every NFL team there's a playlist on the channel with the teams that we have done make sure to comment which team I should do next the Falcons uh, obviously become more of a contender this year because the court mainly because the quarterback they added in free agency Kirk Cousins will be mentioning him quite a bit in this video three things to look forward to most, what to watch. Number three, the offensive balance that they're about to have. You know, last year they were more run heavy in terms of their strengths. They tried to pass the ball. Sometimes we're, we were calling for them to run the ball specifically to Bijan Moore, but I think they were kind of one dimensional in the area, the level of the field that they kind of targeted or where their strengths were, you know, underneath. Um, but they should be much more explosive this year. So I, I, when I talk about balance, I mean more than just, yeah, they, sh they should be pretty good running and throwing the ball, pretty equally effective. That's great. But the level of the field that they could uh, have success at, underneath, you know, intermediate, you know, and then downfield as well. Cousins is a pretty good, uh, accurate, I should say, downfield passer. Drake London, Darnell Mooney, these guys should be good downfield. But underneath game, through the air and on the ground with Bijan and others should be very effective as well. And what that creates, obviously that's good because they're good everywhere, but that creates a very tough game plan for opposing defenses. You can't just sit down there in the film room and go, all right, that's what we're going to focus on. No, you have to focus on this, that, the other thing, you know, so it's, it's a little tricky for, for defenses and it's kind of a new look Falcons team, um, you know, as well are because of that, because it's much different than last year. It's a whole new system, new offensive coordinator. So by that alone, uh, not only are they better, but they they are a much tougher game plan for opposing defenses, and that is just – that's a good thing for, for Atlanta, obviously. So that's definitely something to keep an eye on here. Let's go on the defensive side of the ball. Um, I'm looking forward to watching Raheem Morris's defense with actual star defensive backs. You know, and he had Jalen Ramsey at one point, obviously in LA. But what what was uh you know what was Jalen Ramsey known as? Like clearly the best corner in football. And other than that, you know, looking at last year and some other years, of Raheem, Raheem Morris's uh, time being a defensive coach, not the best players in the secondary, especially at safety. You know, especially last year and. and I thought he hid that pretty well. Like the Rams defense played much, maybe not the playoff game, but much better than they look on paper. Even even still, when they struggle a little bit, like they didn't look that great on paper. Um, you know, minus Aaron Donald. So I thought he always got the most out of his players, and I he always had them playing better than expected. So now he's with the Falcons, and something a lot different than last year. He actually has star defensive backs. Jesse Bates already a star. AJ Terrell. Uh, has shown signs of that and he can be so you have a stud safety you, uh, playmaking safety you have a stud corner in this defense so something more than what Morris has had or had last year so I'm really excited about that um, we, we should see a lot of zone coverage in this defense you know a lot of cover for uh, I, Jesse Mates going to Jesse Bates is going to continue to play be a big time playmaker that he is he can even be more of a playmaker um, interesting because a couple years ago, the Rams under Morse, they had Nick Scott, who played, came out of nowhere, played pretty well for them at safety. Pretty damn well. Like, all right, who is this kid? Like, he's pretty solid. The Bengals then lose Jesse Bates in free agency to the Falcons. Jesse Bates continues to play like Jesse Bates. Like, it's not a system thing. It's not a scheme thing. It's a Jesse Bates thing, obviously. And then Nick Scott, the Bengals sign him to a pretty decent deal to replace Jesse Bates, and he struggled. He was not the same player away from Raheem Morris. They already got rid of him, and they've added more safety since. So, a little bit of a connection there. Now Jesse Bates is playing under Raheem Morris, and he's making guys like Nick Scott, Jordan Fuller, players like that look good at safety. What is Jesse Bates? Jesse Bates doesn't need someone to make him look good, first off. But what is he going to look like in that defense? A little scary for opposing offenses. So I'm really excited about that. Just big-time defensive backs, A.J. Terrell. And then I think getting more out of Terrell, could he be like a Jalen Ramsey-type player? Maybe that's a little much, but uh, it's a thought, you know. I think he can be a really good player. He's got to stay healthy. And, yeah, maybe why they didn't attack more in terms of the edge rushers. Like, the, people want them to add big-time pass rushers. Maybe, you know, they feel like they have young guys that, that Raheem Morris can develop. He's always got more out of those guys as well. And, and they're pretty good in terms of 
uh, you know, their their defensive backs. He's got star DBs. They added interior defensive linemen. They already got some guys there, and they got some sneaky, solid linebackers as well. So uh, maybe that was kind of the whole plan. They're probably pretty excited about the DBs they have in there. And then number one, I can't wait. Something, something that really people aren't talking about enough I can't wait to see Kirk Cousins with an actual offensive line. Maybe that's not completely fair to the Vikings offensive line last year because they finally got better. They were, you know, they weren't great. The tackles were pretty good. You know, Darisaw is an up and comer, but he misses some games here and there. But it was probably the better one of the better Vikings offensive lines, and that's not saying much. But uh, since the Brett Favre year, which it was ridiculous that year, the the really good Brett Favre year. Uh, but they were they've been really bad for a long time, and Cousins had his hands full with that. And Kirk Cousins was good. His career with the Vikings really good, like really solid every year, consistent. What was kind of the one knock on that offense? You know, pretty much every year was the offensive line. Like he's getting hit instantly. They're allowing a lot of interior pressure, uh, and it's just and he's getting beat up and staying healthy. But finally. It's uh it's a pretty decent offensive line, good for the Vikings, and, and then he gets uh he gets injured, um so that was unfortunate. But the Falcons offensive line looks legit. It is legit. It's it's definitely better than any Vikings offensive line Kirk Cousins had. Is no question, even even compared to last year, no question. So that's something that it's like new. Like I, I'm really excited to watch that. It's gonna it's gonna be interesting. Like a, a guy that is a really smart, accurate passer that gets the ball out quick. That's a consistent player, consistent quarterback, good quarterback. Like, actually, is going to have time. He should. Um, you know, if if their if offense line's not good, maybe it's something with Cousins, but I don't think so. Uh, but it's going to be fun to see. It's going to be. Uh, I'm excited to see it. Like, see how he does with that. You know, people talk about well, he doesn't have Justin Jefferson anymore, but he's got legit weapons uh, more than at just the receiver position. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a second, but. Now he's got an offensive line, much better offensive line. So really excited about that. It's going to be a little tougher for defenses to deal with that. Uh, a little bit different of a look for for Cousins' offense and, and the Falcons' offense. So um, this this seems like a pretty balanced team. I think the one thing on their team is maybe the edge uh, position. But you know, somebody probably, a young guy, probably step up perhaps. But really balanced team. Feels like a, a, one of the better complete rosters, a, a playoff roster it looks like. They should be the heavy favorites of the NFC South. So really excited about you know Kirk Cousins and, and this team going forward here. Um, but we're not really talking about Don talking about Kirk Cousins. The players that were about this was tough to pick out just three players. There's other players I really want to talk about, but every one of these players, Kirk Cousins kind of has has to do with like it's going to come up. But Kyle Pitts, who we know could be, uh, he has the upside to be an elite tight end, be an elite weapon, and he's been he's been kind of productive, maybe more productive than people kind of give him credit for. But at the same time, he's been underwhelming. You you want more, but the quarterback play has been even more underwhelming. Uh, you know, so now they bring in a solid, consistent, accurate quarterback and Kirk Cousins and who fed TJ Hawkinson all year last year. And it's great for Kyle Pitts. Like, is this guy going to take off now? Like, is he going to be, he should very, he should be pretty damn productive. And he does, they do have other weapons to get the ball to, but uh, it, it's going to be, it's a guy that everyone's keeping their eye on. Like, could he take that next step? Like he has to take that next step now. Um, and, and we know he, he can be special. So are we going to see that in year one where Kirk out there? So it's, it's going to be um, really fun to watch. Number two, I'm going to go Bijan, and it has to do with Kirk Cousins as well because now not only should Bijan get the ball more, which we were kind of calling for a year ago, but so that's fantastic. But teams actually are going to have to fear the passing game because the Falcons have a quarterback and they have weapons. They have to fear the passing game, which by itself – improves the running game and opens things up for the running game for B. John Robinson. And again, Cousins is a smart quarterback. He knows he knows when it's time to check it down to the running back or he knows when to find the running back. The running back's a receiver too at times. And you have a big time rece- upside you know, receiving back in B. John Rob- Robinson. He's going to get the ball through the air from Kirk Cousins. He is going to do that, whether it's Behind the line of scrimmage, just beyond it, or even downfield if they try to create some mismatches because you're going to have to guard Kyle Pitts. You're going to have to guard Drake London. You're going to have to, guard, you're gonna have to, you're, you're gonna have to cover Darnell Mooney. You know, so then Bijan, you probably can put out wide at times, have a linebacker on him that Bijan's just a way better athlete than Cousins will find him. He will find him. It's going to be like, you know, Delvin Cook in his prime. They kind of got him going uh, in the receiving or the passing game, however you want to call it. But 
So I, I think once again, Cousins comes up here and it opens things up for a running back that could be one of the very best in football this year. Like we're at the end of this year, we could be talking about him being maybe the one, you know, one of the very best. So excited about that. Number one, another offensive player. I wanted to put AJ Terrell on here because I think he really could, you know, uh, take off under Raheem Morris. And we kind of talked about that already though, but Drake London is about to really take off and he kind of already has. I thought he was, I thought he had a great season last year, probably better than what people give him credit for. Uh, and he hasn't really had the best quarterback play yet. He still has upside. Uh, I think he's pretty polished for a guy with upside though. This is a, this is a really good receiver. Uh, he's way ahead of schedule for me. Like he's way better than I thought he was going to be. Uh, you know, we, everyone knew he was a good prospect. We had him as a first round prospect. Falcons took him pretty early. I'm like, was that a little early? It wasn't at all a bad pick, but he's better than I thought he would be at this point. Uh, I actually think I'm going to say, I think this is a star receiver in the making, especially when you get a good quarterback now in Kirk Cousins. But even if Michael Penix is out there, this guy has all the potential in the world. I think he can be a top 10 receiver maybe this year. I think he's that good because at USC, it was a lot of schemed up things. as like a big body guy and he had the injury. Like, how's he going to be? But he, to me, he's got, he's a do it all type receiver. I, I, I love his game. I don't think people are prepared to what, what he's going to be. I think he can be an elite receiver like pretty quickly. So I went from being like not super high. I'm like, I know he's a good prospect, but not super high to, to very high on Drake London. It's a guy, it's one to watch. It's a guy to, to buy stock in, you know, whether it's fantasy or whatever. Um, it, it's, it's a guy I want to get my hands on in a fantasy league. Cause I, I think he's going to be absolutely dominant. He had flashes last more than just flashes, but he was really, really good last year and like a force. And uh, Raheem Morris talked. That's like the first thing I felt like he talked about when he came in. Like he was like, "Yeah, we got a good team. We got these weapons." But he highlighted Drake London like that. Like this guy is a stud. He he cannot wait to coach this guy. He's a defensive guy, so he knows like dealing with these types of players. So it, it's a guy I'm really excited about. Like he can be. There's so many good receivers in the NFL, and so he kind of gets. And people realize he's good and he has upside. He's one for the future. I'd say forget that. I'd say right now. So people kind of like, they don't think about him when it comes to top 15 or even, you know, top 10, top 15 receivers. I think he's going to be pushing that. So really, as you can tell, really excited about Drake London. I think it's a star in the making. I really do based on what I've seen. I think he's way ahead of schedule. He has more to his game uh, than, than I thought he would. And he's been a little more durable than I thought he would. So knock on wood. Got some wood right here, so that's good. Uh, games to watch, and they all kind of have to do with Kirk Cousins once again. As you probably could tell, especially that last one. Uh, but at Eagles in week two, would you believe that Kirk, this is the third season in a row that Kirk Cousins is playing the Eagles in Philly on prime time in week two? That's weird. That's absolutely weird. And it has not gone great for Kirk Cousins in the Vikings in those games. Uh, and Well, now it's the third time in a row he'll be on the Falcons, obviously. Uh, and it did not go great. The first one, two years ago, Kirk Cousins played, did not play well, but he was constantly pressured. It was just a big-time problem. And I thought Cousins played very well last year. Uh, there was some mistakes, but he was constantly pressured in, the, in that game as well. Um, but now, yeah, the, I mean, the common theme in that one, the offensive line did not hold up against the Eagles pass rush. They got some big names up there. They still do, even though it's a little different, but you know, so kind of going into my number one thing to watch, Kirk Cousins has an offensive line. They have actually have an offensive line. So uh, how, how do they match up with the Eagles uh, front defensive front? How does Kirk Cousins play against this team? Can they fi can he finally beat the Eagles in week two in prime time in Philly? Uh, I thought that was very interesting that like week two at Philly prime time, Kirk Cousins three years in a row. That was weird. Uh, you know, so, and it's a, it's also kind of a heavyweight NFC battle here in week two. So another reason Cowboys in week nine, yeah, kind of a heavyweight battle. I expect, I expect the Falcons, the Cowboys, like they're like sure thing, like good regular season teams. Like the question I guess will be the same thing with the Cowboys. Like, are, are they a good playoff team? And then with the Falcons, it's going to feel like they're kind of a new playoff team. And then Cousins is what is he won one playoff game. I don't really think it's on him. I think he's fine in the playoffs. Um, but yeah, so people will kind of like similar teams. Like they, they should be like 
They're good rosters, explosive teams, balance, good on both sides of the ball. Should pretty much sure thing like to be good in the regular season. They play each other in week nine, kind of where things kind of kicking in the gear like that. Also, Mike Zimmer, longtime coach of Kirk Cousins, is the defensive coordinator of the Dallas Cowboys now. So he's familiar with Kirk Cousins, how he plays, maybe how to how to get after him. And Cousins is familiar with that Mike Zimmer defense for sure. They're, so the game plan is going to be interested, uh, interesting, I should say, uh, in that one. And the Vikings. Uh, I know the Falcons should be much better than the Vikings, but the Vikings will be a little sneaky, but they're familiar with Kirk Cousins. This is going to be a, like a big, uh, a big. it's not going to really feel like revenge, I guess. It doesn't really have that feel, but it, it's kind of a big game. He's going home to Minnesota. There's a good chunk of the Minnesota Vikings fans that just do not, never like Kirk Cousins. I don't know. And then the other half kind of like, they, hey, he was really good for us, you know. So um, it's going to be interesting there in Minnesota. Could the Vikings be a little sneaky? You know, probably a must win for them and maybe a must win down in week 14 for the Falcons in terms of uh, clinching the division around this time or getting a really good seed uh, for them. So, and obviously the divisional game should be pretty important, but I, they, um, they're not going to be easy. They're not going to be free. Bucks were pretty deadly last year, uh, but Falcons, like it, it, if they, if they don't win that division, something went wrong. Like, I feel like even with Michael Penix, they can win that division. Uh, but, you know, I know it's a rookie quarterback, much different system, but um, we will see. Uh, and to some fans' takes here, we got some ex-subscribers, Anthony Kramer, Cousins providing stability that they've lacked in the position. Yeah, we touched on that. Just everyone's eyes are going to be on Kirk Cousins and how he changed this team, how much better he makes some play calling improvements. Uh, yeah, uh, the, it, I, I didn't get on Arthur Smith as much as uh, nearly as much as everyone else. I actually think he's a pretty good offensive uh, offensive coach. Uh, looking at his time in Tennessee, I just thought he was pretty limited at the quarterback position. Uh, but yeah, people kind of wished he got the ball to like Bijan a little bit more. But he was kind of riding the hot hand there at times. So yeah, we'll see if there's any changes in play. And the playbook's going to be different. The 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 game plan. Uh, but the advantage to the new. But you have to give credit to them as well. But to the new staff that they actually have a quarterback. So. Um, it, it will, I think it's definitely going to look like there's better play calling, but I think it's just more so because they have a quarterback, uh, interior defensive line rotation after the draft, improving a, a horrible pass rush unit. Yeah. Does where he uh, questions Does Raheem Morris kind of just make guys better, uh, on that, D, uh, that, uh, the, the, you know, the defensive line, I should say the, the young, they have a bunch of young guys, not just the kind of the rookies, but guys from the past. Ebiketti, does he step up? Uh, Braylon Trice, I think could have a good rookie year. Uh, they've added, um, you know, a couple stud interior defense. I mean, I watch out for Brandon Dorless. I like Dorless a lot. That's, he's kind of under the radar right now, but, um, but he is more of an upside guy. So I'm not really worried if he doesn't start, if he doesn't play much early on, but He's a good player. I think it's a good fit for Dorless's defense. Um, so how do they rotate all those guys? Does Grady Jarrett get back on track? Uh, Pitts and Bijan, potential breakouts. Yep, we talked about that. Definitely could. J.D. Bertrand, he just puts J.D. Bertrand here. And I love that, actually, that we get to talk about him because, yeah, the linebacker units, maybe a little bit of a question, but they do have some guys that, you know, Ken Ellis is a underrated player. They, they signed the last staff you know Ryan Nielsen signed him you know Saints background and he he's pretty sneaky he can rush the passer but does he fit Raheem Morris's defense because he is a unique type of linebacker and they're going to start him they're going to try to get him to work um you know this guy like Anderson step up but uh, and they draft JD Bertrand for a reason they view him as I bet you he's more they view him as more of a fit than anyone else they have on in that linebacker room uh, I bet you that doesn't mean they start him, you know, over better players, but that's the case. I think Bertrand to me is pretty polished. He's he's had years of uh, this past year. Notre Dame blitzed him a ton, uh, but he's been good in covers. He's got he's he's got experience across the board, like different types of roles of a linebacker. So I think he's pretty pro ready. He was a guy like right before the draft, he was really growing on me. Like I moved him up. He's probably one of the bigger risers for me. Um, you know, so I think he's going to be solid. They actually could start him or play him early on. Um, and, and they view him as a fit for a reason. And um, it's a pretty good linebacker. I think people were uh, sleeping on, you know, so I'm glad he just, he, uh, Anthony here just put JD Bertrand. Cause that's a good talking point. Cameron Sullivan. Will we see Penix this year? 
and in what ways. Yeah, I think we only see him if Cousins is a little banged up, so I kind of hope we don't see him. But even if he has to play, that's another good debate too. Like, I think it's a pretty good team with them. And like, you know, do, does he stay healthy? You know, does it translate that Washington system is a little bit different? But he's got good weapons. I think he plays better than what Ritter, how Ritter played last year. So I still think they they could be the favorites of that division. So um, hopefully he doesn't play, but it will be interesting if he does. Offense with Kirk Pitts and Bijan breakout. Yeah, we kind of touched on that. Morris and Lake defense. Uh, Lake didn't have a good uh, good go in college, but I think that was just because he wasn't a good head coach. And uh, recruiter maybe, but so how you know he's supposed to have more of a role calling that defense, but um, yeah, and uh, so we'll see how that goes. I guess that's a big question. Um, you know, if he has that much control and is, is he a good coach or not? You know, he's thought highly of obviously Raheem Morris brings him in, brings uh broad Lake in. So we'll see. I uh, just didn't have the best go as a head coach in college in recent, in somewhat recent years. Um, and uh, he has a take Cam Sullivan always has a take the offensive line finishes the second best in the NFL behind the Lions. And yeah, I think we agree. The Lions probably have the best offensive line. There's some other good ones out there. Uh, the Falcons are up there. Second might be a little high. So it's a little bold, not really that bold. I can definitely see it, but yeah. And that we talked about it. It's huge. If the offensive line is anywhere near that good. Cause what was the, what was the best the Vikings offense line has ever been for Kirk? Uh, it was last year, but it was, I, it was really just the tackles, the interior, the interior got better actually down the stretch. Um, but it's that's gonna be really fun to watch. And then some more takes, uh, Jacob or Jacoby. Uh, Falcons suck. Saints are superior, but somehow in their me, uh, mediocrity, uh, I'm losing my point here, my spot. And horrible in this. I don't know if I've heard that word. The Falcons win the South by three wins in a record of 12 and five. So Saints guy doesn't like the Falcons, but hey, the Falcons will be pretty good. Uh, they're gonna go 12 and five. So yep, uh, fair take there. Funny one, ATL Dirty Birds, obviously a Falcons guy. What are your thoughts on the Falcons secondary? Yeah, we touched on that. It's going to be fun to watch with uh, with Raheem Morris. I like the secondary. Jesse Bates, one of my favorite players in the league, one of the better safeties. I, I'd say if we're talking playmaker, straight up playmaker, I think he's the best in football, best playmaker in, in, in on defense and football. I think playmakers, when you say the word playmakers, I think 99% of the people out there want to talk about like receivers and a hundred percent. I should agree. But what I, it, it makes sense, but I think playmakers, I, I think defensive backs. I mean, I played defensive back growing up, um, you know, and then we always talk about that, be the best playmakers out there. Uh, so I, I think, uh, I think as defensive backs, I think of Jesse Bates, biggest, biggest playmaker in football, perhaps. Uh, again, we talked, we touched on in the beginning of this video. Like I think more, um, Morris at having actually really good def- DBs out there, I think it's going to get a lot out of them. I guess who steps out up, um, uh, other than AJ throughout the cornerback position, I guess, I guess that could be a little bit of a question. I'm not really too worried about, do you think their linebacker core is underrated? Yeah, I do. I mean, Caden Ellis, the question is, how, how is he going to work with this scheme? He really fit the last one. Like, he's such a unique type of linebacker. Got to blitz him a little bit. Um, that's It's more of that. I think he's an underrated player because you don't hear his name ever kind of being brought up. Um, I, Bertrand can be sneaky. So, we'll see. They are a little underrated group, but it's a little bit of a question. Like, how does it, like, mesh with this new, uh, you know, with this new defense? Um also, what are your thoughts on Morris and Lake's defensive scheme? Thanks for the awesome content. Appreciate you very much. Yeah, um, we I mean, we touched on it a little bit in, in this video that you know, Raheem Morris always had a pretty good defense, and he's always made them look better than how they look on paper. I know he had Aaron Donald, but, man, these young guys that aren't supposed to be anyone in terms of rushing the passer from the Rams, better than expected. The DBs on paper look really bad, better than expected. Um, one of the better zone defenses. The only knock is, like, there's no man coverage, really. It's, like, a lot of zone, a lot of cover four. So I, the teams that win the Super Bowl – their defense is typically like mix it up. They're a little unpredictable. So at times he, the only knock, the only knock at times he could be, it could be a little predictable because he just does what he does best, but it works out. Uh, His own defense is superior and he's really good with the cover four. There'll be a lot of cover three as well. Uh, Then Jimmy Lake, uh, 
Uh, yeah, I, I think Morris brought him in because it's like a, a similar mindset, similar philosophy. We'll see. There's a lot to learn about that. Like if they change it up a little bit to, based on the personnel that they have and, and then how much control does, does Lake have and is he a good coach? I, they think highly of him. I, you know, it's kind of a question uh, question at this point. Um, so some good questions there. And then the real con man, uh, Falcons missed the playoffs with a 7-10 and record. So a little bit of bold prediction here. Kirk Cousins has a high chance of having the worst season of his career due to the effect of his torn Achilles. That's the big question, too, we haven't really talked about. Like, he's been, like, one of the more durable, maybe the most durable guys before last year because he's taken a beating and he just gets back up. Like, what is this guy made of? Um, and he's always been healthy. And last year he gets injured. For all those reasons and it being an Achilles thing and the way he kind of planted, um, it kind of seemed like a fluke thing. So I, myself and a lot of other people don't really think he – we don't really see him getting injured again, knock on wood. But we, I just really, it doesn't really give you like – yeah, in like vibes of he's going to keep getting injured or that's going to be an issue. The, the question is – Maybe kind of kind of what this guy's saying here is that he's just not really the same player after it. Like maybe the legs aren't the same. Maybe maybe the footwork is a little off, or like planting and throwing the ball. Maybe you know maybe it's in his head a little bit. I don't really think that part, but maybe and, you know and I, he could have the worst season of his career because of that. I mean, no Justin Jefferson, but again, he has really good weapons. Like he's gonna help Drake London become a star. Darnell, we didn't talk about Darnell Mooney enough in this video either. Darnell Mooney, I loved. He was one of my biggest sleepers in that draft out of Tulane. And then year one, he looks pretty good. I'm like, all right, I think I was onto something there. And then he kind of disappeared when Justin Fields came in. I just, I think something with Fields and him, they didn't have a connection. Now he has Kirk Cousins. I think Mooney's gonna be really good. So he has the weapons. Um, not just as receivers, not just in the passing game, but, you know, Bijan Algier to open things up for them. Um, you know, so I think he'll play well. It's just, you know, even if Penix has to come in, like I think they win more than seven games. I, I like the roster. I like the team. I like the, uh, they should be pretty unpredictable with new staff, like a new Falcons team, I like the schedule. I think I said that, uh, I, I feel like it's going to be, you know, I guess could Kirk and Penix get hurt? Based on you know Kirk last year and Penix's career, I guess, but tough to predict that. And that'd probably be the way they don't they they win less than seven. But uh, I see them winning more than that. I think the bottom line is nine wins, but I think that's that's really pushing it there. But it is a bold prediction. It's also it is something we are kind of it's realistic. It's I say it should say it is a realis realistic bold prediction. Um, it's something we're kind of keeping an eye on at Kirk Cousins post Achilles injury away from the Vikings, Kevin O'Connell and. Um, Jefferson, but man, I'm excited about him with this offensive line. So, uh, yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments. We are doing this for every team, a playlist on the channel for the teams we have done. We're getting through it here. Uh, make sure you follow us on Twitter slash X to kind of get involved. Links pin in the comments for that. And our sponsors like liquid IV code GOAT for 20% off some really good stuff. It's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.